Hello everyone, my name is Professor David Ewan and this video is part of my application to teach a master class at Skying. I'm excited to do it. There are many different topics uh, that I put forth in um, my application as suggestions, uh, but today I'm going to talk about public speaking, public speaking. So what do you think about public speaking? Do you remember when Steve Jobs announced uh, the iPhone uh, in 2007? Think of any business leader or any government leader as they present themselves in a way of confidence using the right words. That's what we're going to be talking about, public speaking. And I'll give you 10 tips for public speaking. The first thing that we have to do before I give you the 10 tips of public speaking is to understand the mode of thinking, the way of thinking. Uh, first of all, you have to recognize your own areas of strength and development. You have to practice the techniques to elevate your speaking skills. You have to demonstrate the signs of being comfortable and dynamic and being an empathetic speaker. Uh, be ready to receive the insights and the techniques for correcting bad communication habits and establishing better ones. So let's dive into talking about the 10 tips of public speaking. The first thing uh, is nervousness is normal. You have to practice and prepare. That nervousness, it's uh, think of uh, an Olympic athlete. Uh, and the television interviews you see after they won their gold uh, medal. What they will tell you is that they were nervous. They weren't prepared uh, in terms of their thinking. Well, they were actually prepared because they've practiced their whole lives for that one moment of winning the gold medal. But they have that nervousness still. So understand that there's a good kind of nervousness. It's the kind of nervousness that you would see an Olympic athlete to get that gold medal. Uh, number two, know your audience. Remember, whatever you're presenting isn't about you. It's about them. Uh, one of the things that I do is I do a meet and greet. I arrive at the venue early. And as people arrive in the room, I'm getting to know them because I want to custom tailor my conversation to their needs because at the end of the day, it's all about their needs. Uh, they paid for the event. Uh, in my case, they paid to see me speak. So um, it's all about them. So I need to deliver to them. I don't need to deliver to myself. Um, the next thing is to organize your material in the most effective manner to attain your purpose. The way that I do it is when I'm giving a university presentation, um, I usually have a whiteboard behind me and off to my side, I'll have a list of 20 agenda items. So I'm not reading from a script. What I'm doing is I'm using that to guide me through the different steps so that I don't miss anything, but I give that as the agenda. So not only is the agenda on a piece of paper that's passed out to all the attendees, but it's also on the board. So what they see is me and also behind me, obviously on the side, not behind me, but on the side, is they'll see what I've written down on the whiteboard, the agenda items. So that's how I organize uh, my material. Uh, the next thing, number four, is to watch for feedback and adapt to it. One of the things I do, and I learned this from watching videos of Steve Jobs, is I would walk around the room to show that I have authority in the room. And as I do, I'm in different positions of the room. And what I'm able to do is to see as people turn their heads, the expression in their eyes, the yawning, if there's any yawning, um, and if, if they're confused and they need more elaboration, or if they're excited and they're smiling and they kind of get what I'm talking about, I need to be able to adapt to that. For example, when I see people who are tired, okay, it's time to take a maybe a five to seven minute break. Um, if I see people a little confused, I need to pause and maybe I need to ask a question to the audience to get an understanding of what they understand so that I can supply the 
additional information. So that's what I mean by watch for feedback and adapt to it. That means you're looking at the body language and the facial expressions of your audience. Uh, the next one is to use humor, tell stories and use effective language. Uh, the reason why I use a sense of humor is um, in my case, my workshop seminars are for three hours and it's from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at night. So it's from 1800 to 2100. It's an evening three hour workshop seminar. I know my audience, as I've talked about before, you have to know your audience. I know they've worked all day. They're tired. So the reason why I use humor is if I get them to laugh, not I, I don't mean I'm a stand up comedian, but just some sort of sense of humor. Laughter opens up the lungs. And when the lungs are opened up and receives more air, that gives people their second life in the evening. They'll be able to stay awake more. And it is also more enticing. These stories keep people captivated. The sense of humor gets people to smile. And when the face smiles, the whole body smiles. Um, so that's why that's important. Um, as I said before, don't read your script. Um, work from an outline uh, because in any presentation that you give publicly, you need to know your material. Um, you may not have it memorized and that's the purpose of an outline. As I spoke before, um, I pass out an outline and then I also have the outline for my benefit and the audience's benefit written on the whiteboard on the side. And I refer to it. And even, um, well, it's a three hour workshop seminar. So halfway through or 25% of the way through, I'll say, well, so far we talked about one, two, three, and I would state the, the items. So the audience sees that I'm keeping my promise and that I'm on track. So that's important. Uh, the next one is to use your voice and hands effectively. Um, what you want to do is maybe use a hand gesture um, and emphasize certain points. Um, the body language is an important part of spoken language. Spoken language is not just talking like a robot in monotone. You need to be able to tell stories and use that sense of humor. I talked about that before. And of course, that's more done in a fun way. Uh, let's talk about this. Grab your the attention at the beginning. You must have some sort of an introduction. Maybe it's an antidote, a little story. Maybe it's a joke. Maybe it's a, a rhetorical question where you ask a question to get people to think, not just so much for people to physically answer, but, but do something that grabs people's attention so that they realize, oh, wait, this might be very interesting. And at the very end, you have this very dynamic end. This will be the best advice to tell you how you end. Um, number one, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. When you're giving a public speaking event, you need to captivate them in the beginning and you must have a very dynamic end because that's the only time you're going to see them. Not everyone will remember 100% of what you said, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And that is the aha moment. At the very end of your presentation, that is the moment of truth. Did you succeed giving them the value that they expected? Okay, so that's uh, very important. Um, and finally, use your audio and visual aids uh, wisely. Um, there's a lot a public speaker can do without all of the extra tools. But if you're going to use a PowerPoint presentation, for example, don't put so many words in it that you're reading the PowerPoint presentation. The PowerPoint presentation is supposed to be a point of note, some sort of image. Uh, an example of an image might be a graph, but you don't have to write uh, the explanation of the graph. You're going to speak it. Here is why it is important not to have so much written text on the, the graph or on the image in a PowerPoint presentation. If people start reading it, they won't listen to what you're saying. 
And what you're saying is being spoken at a different speed from the way they are reading it on the PowerPoint presentation. So either the reading or the speaking will interrupt each other and they'll get confused. And that's why too many words on a PowerPoint presentation does not work. It causes confusion. So what you want to do is have the image. And in terms of the dialogue, it's not on the PowerPoint presentation. It is what you are speaking. You are, through your own words, adding to the, the PowerPoint presentation. Anyways, those are a few tips. Um, and uh, as I said before, uh, you want to be able to have a great captivating ending. End it with a QA and a uh, because whatever they might have opened in their heart and they feel that not everything's been fully satisfied, include in your time that you have uh, dedicated to you a Q&A. So um, I would suggest have a meet and greet in the beginning to know your audience, have the Q&A at the end, and that way you are really tailoring your conversation to your audience. There's other topics uh, that I can share with you for a masterclass. I've included that in my application or the material submitted for the masterclass in Skying, but I just share this video here to give you an example of a wonderful topic that I enjoy uh, teaching about. Uh, thank you for your time. My name is Professor David Ewan. Have a good day.